Welcome to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. Join us as we share our favorite RPGs, one-shot games, tabletop games, reviews of items, and convention panels, and other exciting things that we run into from time to time. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. All right. This is nice, Niels. I don't miss it. I can watch your lightsaber if you don't want to take this. Thank you. Oh, it puts it right there. Oh, you threw up on it. Oh, you're like, yeah. So if you are interested in a Stormtrooper costume. It's so big, right? Well, so so Joe, how much does it cost to buy to make a Stormtrooper? To make or to purchase the kit? From start to finish. Tell us about the process of making a Stormtrooper for our time. Really? Yeah, we're gonna. <laughs> All right, you purchase the kit, which you're going to do between three hundred to a thousand dollars. You know where you get it from. Whoa, why is it so expensive? <laughs> you pay for the quality of the work, because we're crazy. Or you pay for the oh. right particular. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had it. Order the kit, and you assemble it, and you get it. You have to trim the, you have to trim the armor because it comes off kind of whatever size. Trim it down to fit you. Then you assemble it with the help of other members of the garrison. If you're lucky. <laughs> or you fumble along and then you beg for help after you messed up a couple of pieces. <laughs> Is this a person's phone? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just know people have done that. <laughs> We've just heard the story. We have a question. Yes, yes, sir. If you're building your Stormtrooper armor, is there a cool website you can go to find help and other fans of the 501st? Uh, I, I would say join. There's a, what is it? The whitearmor.net. White yeah. white yeah. What if he decides not to do Stormtrooper? I mean... Sherm's built more kits than I have. Come on in! Come on in! You built more kits than I have. What are the sites I go to for assistance? It's uh, all about professional fighters. for your scouts. There's uh, white armor for your for your troopers. There's the denim helmet for Boba Fett. There's uh, Blizzard Force for adats. There's tons of help out there. No. Were by the 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 <laughs> and measure twice, cut once. Every time. I measure <laughs> twice. Yeah, yeah, twelve times. Times. different places to get help. Cut, reorder, cut, measure. No. That's the measure you cut by a little bit. Just, just, just to go wet sir. No, no, no. Continue, don't cry. Buy heat gun, ruin part. He got uh, no, no, no. Why did my plastic shrivel? <laughs> oh, Give up. Hey, someone who knows what they're doing, receive giant box. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna get back. We have we have three guests now. And there's a show that we're starting. I know a couple of sites like Anavos, and there's another one in the UK that actually will sell you pre-assembled kits. You send them their your measurements and. Um, and I've heard they're pretty good. I haven't heard anyone to complain uh, about it. Yeah. And there's but with Armos, you're waiting a year. And yes. well, a year. No, that's not true. They will send I ordered all the same kids. Oh, okay. <laughs> you I ordered that two and a half years ago. So I was in the show. Okay. Let's go on for our second trivia question now. What is the second most popular kit <laughs> in the 501st? <laughs> RS <laughs> Anybody that's not in a member of the club <laughs> 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 Go for it, do it again. Take a guess. Darth <laughs> The answer is... TIE Pilot <laughs> is the second most popular kit. Why is that? The Jolly Rogers. That is an excellent... Oh my, we actually have a TIE Pilot with us today. <laughs> <laughs> you were not coerced at all. I... The odds are 575 to 1. Just move on. Don't tell me the odds. <laughs> never, never tell me the odds. So what did you tell us? How did you make your kit? 
I didn't. I bought it. Um, no, uh, uh, I don't remember who made the box. Whoever it is, don't ever buy one from them. Oh, God. Because this is, like, solid rate. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, like, this is, like, 15 pounds on the shoulders every single time I wear this stupid thing. Oh, jeez. Um, the helmet was made by Brian Petty. Um... He's a local guy. Yeah. He's a really he's nice local guy. He does really good work. Yeah, he does. Um, and the jumpsuit, like, there's tons of different uh, websites and stuff that are uh, where you can get uh, jumpsuits for uh, 501st stuff. Um, I get, like, I, I bought this all, sure. like, together, so I'm not the best person for my guests. Here, join us. Okay. <laughs> They just let us in. Yeah, I know. We were talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't come in until 10. And it starts and then you at have to stand in line. Okay, and something starts at 10. Oh. It was a test. If you were a rebel, you would have snuck in ahead of time. <laughs> and then you oh, only, so only good, no more curious would wait until the door is open. He's already an admitted jazz. Rebel out. <laughs> So what, for those of you that have just joined us, we're going down the most popular suits in the Final yeah. First, the number one being Stormtrooper. You don't got one. Thank you. Or Sand Trooper when he turns you on. Yeah. <laughs> and number two being the TIE Pilot. There are quite a few variations of the TIE Pilot, and the new Battlefront exploded with new TIE Pilots that people can do now. So Those are actually Inferno. Squad. Yeah. Yeah. They're, 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 they're like, they can be pilots. We have an Inferno member or two something. Yes, we and with the TIE pilot, you can actually be in the TIE pilot without the helmet and the uh, the rest of it. Just with the hat as a uh, reserve pilot, that's something else too. So, please, which is a great starting point too. Yeah, really good starting point if you don't want to spend too much money. Here. And the third most popular kit is anybody want to guess what the third most popular costume in the five? Give me a hint. <laughs> we actually have one that didn't cost in here either. I'm ahead. Me, right? It's a biker scout. <laughs> so why don't you tell us about being a biker scout? I like to hit trees. <laughs> I hate Ewoks. Don't all stormtroopers hate Ewoks? I really hate them though. Indorian drop bears. They stole my bike, so you know. Oh. That's all. Um, it's because they're taller than you. <laughs> uh, this kit's very hot because I have three different layers of clothing on underneath the armor itself. So it does get hot, but it has benefits where I'm a lot more mobile than, say, a TK, where I can sit down and bend over. This isn't about me. About I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Cool. All right, how much would a biker scout? One of our fine guests was saying, I really want to be a biker scout because that tree needs to be hit and nobody is doing it. How much would it cost them to do that? It say? varies. I got mine with my helmet, and this was a few years ago. The helmet and the, the all the armor, part armor, was I think 650 but it varies depending on where you get it from and depending on what material it is. And then I traded, I had a different, um, Helmet that I traded somebody to make me all the soft armor. So it came out to around, if I really wanted to put a number around 1100 bucks. And if you, everyone of you has one of our super fun handouts, right? If you look on the one page, it has a list of all the different attachments. So if you said, I really want to be a, like a costume, there is a website with other people that will help you. They'll tell you where to get stuff, who to buy it from, who not, not to, to buy, buy it from. from. <laughs> eBay is not your friend. I guess. And then this is important, the costume reference library. And then, yeah, all the information is on there as well, so... That would be where you would go if you get stuck on something. You can There's an actual forum for that that group of people, like for Biker Scouts. There's an actual forum okay, like, thanks. I need help with this, and people are willing to help you, usually. And that's for, and also you can get, get together with the local garrison. Which is here in Tucson and up in Phoenix and up in Flagstaff. I'm not finding that. No, we have armor parties. <clears throat> Let's see if I maybe have Come on in. Stuff. Hello. So we also have those are the three most popular costumes. We've got Stormtroopers is Star Wars. You know, high pilots are easy to wear and fairly easy to build, and biker scouts are just awesome. Right? Here's our Boba Fett. 
Revan, and we have a TFA executioner. So who would you like to hear about next? If you love Boba Fett, raise your hand. Yeah. All right, we're going to do with Boba Fett next. So tell us a little bit about your costume, how, what it's like to wear it, how much you pay for it, and any advice for other people that think, no, Boba Fett is, is a thing. So I love this costume. Um, I'm a little more mobile than a stormtrooper. Uh, depending on how you attach your jetpack, you can't really bend down because mine is on a scuba harness, so it's clipped in, and if I lean forward, it will actually come unbuckled. So I've kind of got to stay straight up. Um, it adds, I think, on average about 20 degrees to whatever room I'm in, so it gets a little warm. Uh, and for price for it, it varies depending on how much work you want to do. I have a friend who built the entire suit himself. It took him about four years, and I think he spent about $4,000 on it. In total for me, I didn't do this because I'm not good enough to do this. <laughs> and it was about 10 grand for everything. But um, MOBA they're really particular about, and all of the dents need to be in the correct place. I mean, the Legion's really particular about everything, but the paint job is mostly He's, he's the most expensive of all. By a wide margin, most are not that much money. It's like Boba, Vader, and then a huge drop off, and then everything else. <laughs> okay, we also have Darth Revan, for those of you that love the expanded universe. Woo! <laughs> Let's hear it for Darth Revan. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Um, so I'm not a very well-known character with most public. Usually at cons, I'm pretty well recognized. Most people play the Knights of the Public Games 2003. Yeah. But um, in terms of the armor, um, also not. I was I'm a very uh, clothes savvy, can't sew. None of that really got into that. So I did have a full commission from Wicked Armor. Very good site. Um, he does a lot of work. He actually does French Republic Commando. If we're interested in that. Um, very good guy. Works with you. You can email him like, hey, how's the armor coming along? He busted all this out in probably about two months. He's wow. very efficient at it. Um, after it came in, I kind of worried. I did do my uh, own boots. Uh, finding those took me a little bit, about a day. Can't really see them, but. And after that, it was very quick approval. Um, the armor in of itself, it is three layers of black linen, so it's very warm. Um, does breathe a little bit, especially down below the waist in the nice air conditioned rooms, but outdoor troops can be a little warm, especially in the Arizona heat. Um, but it's fairly fun. I do have a little bit of mobility, more than a TK, that's for sure. Um, you can sit and keep your back straight, but it's a fun, and it's very, very exciting when people recognize you because it doesn't happen very often. So when that does happen, it's usually when people recognize you, like, they go crazy because you know they also realize like, hey, not a lot of people recognize Coder anymore. Uh, but hopefully, we'll bring Rev in the light again. So here's the open, but it's a fun, it's a fun concept. All right, thank you so much. And we also have our TFA, the Force, actually not the TFA anymore, the uh, Master, the Last Jedi Executioner, right over here. Yep. And it's actually kind of a hybrid. There, eighty percent of this is Force Awakens too. Um, the uh, shoulder bells, the black yoke, my little black cap just over here, um, and then the helmet's different. Everything else is the same as Force Awakens. Um, it's hard to talk about price with this one because it's a much more recent costume. Um, the version I'm wearing was a prototype done by Anomos like four years ago, three and a half years ago. So it was pretty pricey. It's actually licensed Lucasfilm, whereas most of our makers don't have to have to take on that cost. So my my raw armor kit was like eighteen hundred bucks, um, but it's the most quality, most accurate one out there. So I don't regret it. But you can find kits now for half that um, for uh, TFA or Last Jedi, um, where you get kills. Modern kits are getting a lot tougher over the older ones because they're spending so much money on these movies now. The old TKs were, you know, mostly stuff you could get in hardware stores and other things. Now it's like, they've got all these gaskets between all the layers and very hard to make and kind of expensive to commission out. So you might spend a few hundred bucks just on the, the under parts. Boots are custom, totally custom. So you have to have someone make those. There's another 120 bucks. Gloves are custom, everything's custom now. Um, even the materials they're using in the movies, we can't quite match perfectly anymore. The stuff in the movie is pretty cool, actually. Um, it's like a rubbery material, super flexible, which would be amazing, but it's really heavy. A friend of mine had um, access to some screen kits, and he got to look at some pictures of, if you lay the armor out on the table, it just lays flat, just floppy. 
great for actors to run around in, but costs about 20 grand to make just the armor the way they did for the movies. So we still stick with ABS, same stuff that this guy and that guy, this is made out of, it works great. It's also durable. Like our, our stuff is meant to last for years, not a quick shot and then get shredded. Um, in the movie, the gaskets were rubber and they're all falling apart after like two scenes. So we came up with better ways to do that for, for them to last a while. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of pieces. There's neck seal, there's gaskets, there's boots, custom gloves. Um, the helmets are not super cheap if you, and like, like has been said before, if you want to do it yourself, you could probably do one of these guys for 1500 bucks, but you're doing a lot of work. You might be sewing your own gaskets and doing all your own paint job and all your own work. You could spend three or four grand if you want to commission the work. So it kind of depends on how you want to have it done and stuff. But, um, but again, the cool part is with a few extra parts, you can interchange, you can be two characters, actually more than two characters, because you can be the riot baton trooper, you can be the heavy gunner with a vest. Um, yeah, the executioner parts, or if I just swap to my white shoulder belts on the top and have a white version of that helmet, now I'm the standard uh, Last Jedi Trooper. That's been really nice. You can wear like five costumes in one. I suspect that's going to change in the next movie, so be curious, because <laughs> it sounds like there's going to be a time gap, probably. Nobody really knows yet, um, but it's a fun costume. And not every costume costs $5,000. <laughs> just, just so you know, if you're like, I want to join the club, $5,000 is too much to spend in a costume. We have Imperial Officers, which are under $500? Yeah, actually, $500? cosplay sky, their Imperial Officers uniform is approvable. Oh, uh, just the suit itself. You can use it, I think, about $150. Custom fit to you. It's all the boots, right? Yeah, the boots are the boots, 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 boots And then you have to get the hat, which is probably about $100, $100 there. What else do we have? Pizza, Belt, yeah. blaster, and the um, ring. Yeah, there are, there are, we like to call them entry level costumes, which are low budget, because you know, when I first started doing this, I thought paying a thousand dollars for a costume was the dumbest thing ever. And now I'm like, oh, it's only a thousand bucks. Yeah. Okay, so, and those costumes actually add something. They're not just entry level. Like when we do parades and stuff, having officers there really makes, it gives a much better impression. So like, it's actually a good costume. Yeah, that if anyone out of armor is like very crucial to, to <laughs> doing parades. Right? There's a lot yeah. of vision issues. Yeah, we have no visibility. I can't see, I mean, most of us can't see what the bug is on below this. I mean, yeah. I almost trampled a kid this morning already. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, we got to be very careful. And if something gets dropped, we lose peace. Most of it, I can, I can't that's where I come in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have Wranglers, that, that's, that's usually what, the wives and kids of everybody, and uh, we pick up all the fallen pieces and we tell every guy, label it with your name, yeah. please. Because <laughs> like, yeah. if you drop it, we don't know whose it is, and if their name's on it, at least we know how to get it back to them. And they do cry when they lose a little piece. It may be a little piece to you, it's serious. but to them, it's like that bolt that can't be replaced. <laughs> yeah, <we're just> <laughs> Yeah, we keep them in a pile. We save them until we get them back to their right owner. There's always that picture at the end of the convention. Who recognizes this? <laughs> <laughs> Who's missing this? <laughs> so there's quite a few of you here now. So obviously you have a slight to greater interest in Star Wars and maybe costuming. So do we have any questions out here? Any questions? Like, I'm thinking I want to do this costume, but I want to know more. Any questions? Anybody have any thoughts on that? Any ideas? No? You guys? Yes! So besides the Imperial Officer, what's a good entry level one that someone who's got some skills could make themselves? Is there a type of? And the other ones, are, for you particularly, because you already have a band alert, it would be a Tuscan, Tuscan. Or a Or a job. Be a tall job. Yeah. Yeah. The reserve <laughs> tie is really good, though, because like it also gives you access to like three other costumes besides just reserve type pilot. Like you've got the uh, the regular type pilot. I think that Death Star Gunner wears a black yes, suit. Yeah. Yes, he does. Um, and I think there might be one more, but yeah. yeah it gives you right. access to, yeah. And it gives, yeah. Yeah, it gives you access to multiple Doesn't, don't, doesn't the... The Navy Trooper yeah, wears the, the, the Chief Trooper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with the, with, yeah, with the dumb helmet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to do that one. <laughs> 
Tusk is a fairly easy to make. Uh, I was actually working on that just recently. There's an episode two Tuscans are much easier than the episode four Tuscans because they just they don't have a lot of our extra hardware. And for example, like you know, like I'm a Royal Guard most sometimes, and the Royal Guard there's like five different versions of them. <laughs> and I do the one from episode two. Yes, there was a Royal Guard in episode two. He's out of focus in the background for one second. <laughs> And the difference between him is he's got two slits so you can put both arms out. So if you're clumsy, it's easier to not fall. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's move on. Does anybody thinking, if you want to do a question, let us know. We'll stop and answer any questions you have. If you do have a question but you're too shy, you can find us downstairs later. But, yes, sir? How did all of this find your love for Star Wars? Oh. That's a fantastic question. Why do I love Star Wars? Find the DSG. No, <laughs> find out local Star Wars. I said your local Star Wars. Well, I'm, I'm really old, so I remember when the first one that came out, and I'm like, this is so much better than the other stuff. You're yeah, good too. Yeah, you know, yeah, better, better. <laughs> you can just leave. Right? <laughs> hey, your actual sci-fi, we have space wizards. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and cowboys. Don't forget about cowboys. Yeah. 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 I've got to say, the new oh, Star Trek Discovery is fantastic. Yes, it is. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> that was <laughs> his room, right? Dustin. Hi, Dustin. Hi, Dustin. Hi, Dustin. Is he the one who wanted to walk the door? Yeah. <laughs> So I remember watching the movie as a kid and I just really, really loved it. And I didn't think too much of it when the prequels came out. I really enjoyed those two. And then I decided that I wanted to do something more exciting than be a really boring school teacher. And I found out about this club and I kind of jokingly suggested to my wife I'm going to join and she thought I was crazy. And then I did join, and she still thought I was crazy, and then I started having so much fun, because I mean, you can, pretty much, you can go out every weekend, hang out with other people that love Star Wars, make some kids smile, and then go kick back and talk about Star Wars. Yeah. And you can do it every weekend, you know, we actually just came back from Albuquerque, we hang out with complete strangers that love Star Wars, now they're our friends, we go to California, so it's like being part of this big social group as well, which is more of the reason why I stay that not my first time. Yeah, for instance, with me, I was born right in the middle of all the Star Wars first coming out. So I just grew up around it. It was Star Wars in the early 80s was just, that was everywhere. It was mania. And again, it was high quality versus everything else that was coming out. You go watch 1980s Flash Gordon okay. and versus, versus Empire Strikes Back, I dare you to take that challenge, young man, because <laughs> you will be like, what is this? Well, the first day is awesome. Oh, Jordan's it's amazing. Great. Yeah. Nothing like flying monkeys. <laughs> As for me, who's younger, and I wasn't, uh, Star Wars wasn't coming out around when I was kind of in my teens. Uh, I was moving around a lot, and eventually I lived with one of my uncles, and he was, he at, uh, Star Wars coming out when he was about my age, so we kind of like bonded over that as a very strong, so... And my whole family's been crazy with Star Wars, so it's a very essential part of just our family life. You know, it's, it's something I hope to pass on to my kids. Um, my uncle, you know, I have little cousins now, and I do a lot of Star Wars stuff with them all the time. And so it's just kind of integrated into our family. It's just a huge part, so that's kind of where I found my level, because even with these guys, Star Wars is family. That's what the movies are about, probably not. Anyone else want to share why they love Star Wars so much? <laughs> okay, the lady on the left. <laughs> I'm so bad I loved it. As, I, being a girl growing up, I was very odd for liking Star Wars because, you know, I'm old too. And so, girls just didn't do that. But there was Princess Leia. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> and we loved her, and she was amazing. And um, as a character on the screen, she was this sassy princess nobody had ever seen before. It was new. And so I kind of done that. And my brothers couldn't make fun of me that much. <laughs> Matter of fact, I got to play because I got to be Princess Light. 
And so, and as I grew older, I, I passed it on to my nephews and much to my brothers to say. <laughs> and now I pass it on to my own daughters who they love it just as much as we. Well, yeah, we kind of push a lot more onto them so they get a little tired, but I know. I'll try to put my foot on the crowd again. Teacher voice. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, which costume do you have in the 501st? Oh, I'm the emperor. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So the females, I know I'm, I gender play just because he needed one. <laughs> <laughs> That's love. That's how it started for me. Is he goes, I'm going to make the costume. And I'm like, okay. And he goes, well, I'm going to make this other costume. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's good. He goes, let's go to the guard. Okay, I need an emperor. Oh, you're it. <laughs> and then I became the emperor. He's a, he kept telling me, oh, you're so, you'd be so good as the emperor. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, weird compliment. But it turned out great. I mean, I'm enjoying it. I did. I like it like more than I ever thought I would. Yes, gentlemen, in the back. If I could just add to that, um, so for, for we, we have a bunch of guys dressed up here, but if you put a helmet on, any female can wear any of these costumes and be perfectly acceptable. Um, and the cool thing about Star Wars is, is recently is that uh, it empowers most women. So you have like uh, the Rogue, Rogue One, uh, we have Jen Urso, who is the lead character, and then obviously Ray is in the, in the new movies. Um, and so I have a, I have a daughter who at uh, the tender age of seven wore a TK. And, and she was like this tall in a, in a TK armor, which is the storm, regular stormtrooper. And, uh, and most of us would get upset because when she would walk in, she would take all of the information. Like everybody would go to her uh, as, a little, as a little tiny stormtrooper. Um, but then when the, uh, the new movies came out, she, she wanted to be a Ray. And, or had to be a Ray, and, uh, and so she's got that, and then you'll see her downstairs. Now she's a TIE pilot, so she's got a new Inferno Squad uh, TIE pilot. My wife also does a TIE pilot, um, and then I think the, the, the biggest issue with, with costuming is it's, it, it, it kind of becomes addictive, and what you find is like, hey, I started off with, uh, well, I, I actually bought a Boba Fett costume in 2007 that I've never worn. Uh, and with the advent of 3D printing, I've now kind of accomplished everything and put everything together. But now my 15-year-old son, who's taller than I am now, wears that costume. And, uh, and there's a kid version as well for, it's called the Galactic Academy, if you're not 18 or above. And it really accepts any costume. You can buy something off a Walmart shelf and be part of that Star Wars costume group. But the addiction is real, because uh, that's a, Probably perfect example. Every time I see a Facebook post, he's got something new that he's either building, um, and I've got two different Boba Fett's. So um, they have the they have, he's got the Return of the Jedi version, which is what we call the multicolor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially on the jetpack. So the jetpack is yellow and blue. The Empire Strikes Back version is is mostly like a sage green. It's all one color, and then they have. Uh, the special edition, which is a mix of both, actually, and see, Lucas thought we would figure that out when he put a different helmet with the costume, on, and we did. Um, so there's multiple versions of each costume that you can do as well, but I myself have five different costumes. I'm sure I'm probably low man when it comes to some of these guys. I only have one. Left. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've only got two. <laughs> but but uh, you'll find that... Uh, I try to build them. I build all of my kids' co costumes, um, which again I'm in the same boat as as Jan and Neil's. I'm kind of old, so I remember seeing them when I was a kid, and then I've taken my kids to all the new ones and kind of watched how how they've developed their uh, their love for Star Wars. And, and I, they really didn't have a choice. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> like if I love it that much, they're gonna they're gonna kind of like it. But uh, you know, it, it's just a fun hobby, and. You, and to go to a celebration or a con or something like that, and it's just you find out that the little the little nerd inside of me that wanted to, to dress up when I was a kid, and, and my first costume was C three PO. That 
that my dad just made cardboard tubes and paid him gold. And then I had a Steve Rogers mask, which was the six million dollar man, that he just spray painted gold. Right? And then I walked around for Halloween in a, in a, in a I mean everybody asked who I was, but <laughs> uh, but you just have fun with it and you meet great people and uh, and your family actually is no longer just inside your house. It's this great worldwide uh, community. I've met people from all over the world at different conventions. 10,000 so strong. Yeah, absolutely. So I remember when I got my number, it was four numbers, and, and it was we all we all get assigned a number, and four numbers, and I was like, wow, man, that's a lot of people. Like, God, they'll take you up to 9,999 people, and, and now we're well into, you know, five digits. So, but it's fun, guys. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing community. And the uh, final question also takes costumes from uh, Rebels, the, cop, or the, the show Rebels, if you're the bad guy in Rebels, or the good guys. I can not get one. But we have a talk of that. And then the Clone Wars, we have plenty of costumes from that. The ones of Clone Wars, the Clone Wars cartoon, or the Clone Wars movies. And was, how many people here have watched Star Wars Resistance yet? I'm trying to. <laughs> I watched half of one episode, it seems pretty good. I didn't see any bad guys in there yet, but if they are, we'll take them as well. So. <laughs> oh, there's that with. Uh, I didn't oh, get that far yet. This is the very beginning. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's a new channel, so I have to have it online. Right, so, so, yeah. Okay, true. <laughs> Anybody else want to share what made them love Star Wars? Anyone from the audience? Because you guys are all obviously love Star Wars. Or you can oh, Dustin, why do you love Star Wars? <laughs> I don't love Star Wars. I just wanted to sit down. <laughs> 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 Um, I got, I'm pretty much in the same boat as he is. I mean, I, uh, you know, I joined four digits, you know, uh, I, uh, over 10 years ago, and uh, I ended up uh, with a bunch of uh, OG guys. Um, ended up forming the squad down here uh, below Phoenix, and uh, this is our 10th anniversary this year. So it's, uh, we've been going 10 years uh, doing events, uh, do, visiting kids in hospitals. I don't know if you guys saw a bunch of Star Wars guys talking to kids over there by the front door. That's That was a uh, experience that only the Rebel Legion and our partner uh, groups, you know, the Mando Mercs, us, get with Comic-Con to meet those families for the one hour that they get to come in before the rest of the crowd, and they're all got pediatric patients, kids with various issues, and, but we get to give them a common experience. So it's a small thing, that it's a small example of the amazing stuff that we get to do. With this, with this hobby. So, but the cool thing is, is that it's accessible. I mean, a lot of people, you know, will look at, you know, Clint and be like, oh my god, that suit's amazing, but you know, it made me out of my range, you know. But Braden next to him, when the Tie Pilot, um, it's also his, amazing, by the way. What's that? <laughs> it's also amazing. It's just cheaper. It is amazing. <laughs> it is amazing, and that's why I have one. And that was the first uh, costume that I got approved in, was a TIE pilot. And what's funny is, I came back around, and 10 years later, I got another TIE pilot. So, um, but the great thing about it is, is you take the chest box off, and um, he's still in an approved costume, you know? Um, they had Imperial officers, or uh, Imperial crew members, wearing the exact same stuff, walk around the dust there, you know? And the Star Destroyers. And it's... It's cheaper, so it's accessible, and it's a, it's a great entryway to a great hobby. And then, if you want to go from there, get some armor. Then you're a type pilot. Then you have three costumes: the bridge crew, which is gloveless; the tie reserve, which is the type fighter pilot costume that he's wearing now, but with gloves; and then the full type fighters, uh, which is everything he's got plus the helmet. So. That's why I love it, you know. So you when you're one version, you got the Vader version when he's mistaken for Vader. Oh. If you order oh, a yeah, yeah. costume, no, you that's a running Vader. joke here. Is that yeah? Anybody? How many times do you hear it? I don't hear very, very. I don't hear Vader very often. Vader, Kylo Ren. Kylo. Lot. <laughs> so, you know, just like our Mandalorian work friends, you know, how many times do they go up to them and say, "Hey, it's Boba Fett," and they're just like, "Oh yeah, all right, I'm Boba Fett." Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, but. Um, but it's fun. So what's funny is I've been a Star Wars fan my whole life. Um, the first movie I saw in the theater was Empire Strikes Back, and that one stuck with me. Because um, my wife Michelle, she knows she's like, oh no, damn it, <laughs> go on and on. Right? And um, 
But then the cool thing is that um, how the squad form was kind of funny is that I was bored out of my mind you know, one day and I'm like, oh, let's see if there's any, any kind of fan club in town. So I got online and I found one called the Fan Force. And it was just a fan club. So I went and I met with them. They were meeting at a library and only like three people showed up. And I walked in and I'm like, and we, I hung out for a little bit, we talked. And it was mostly about just kind of sitting around and talking about stuff. Damien showed up, Cat showed up, somebody else. I don't remember, but uh, maybe Jake. I don't remember. But anyway, the bottom line is I walked out going, these guys are a bunch of freaking nerds. I'm not going to hang out with them. <laughs> <laughs> and it ended up being the biggest mistake of my life because then when I went, uh, I, did, I wasn't going to go back, but then Hurricane Katrina hit, and they all got together and decided to do a, a clothing drive for Hurricane Katrina. That was a big thing. It was huge down here. Uh, people just make clothing drives over and over. So I'm like, all right, that's cool. So I'll go to that. So I go to that to help out, but they happened to put in a call to the Doomsday Garrison in Phoenix, and they sent down some stormtroopers. And they sent down one with an extra sand trooper, like Joe's wearing here, that was actually meant for somebody else. It was meant for Frankie, but he got sick, so they're like, hey, you want to put it on? I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> so I put it on, and it's like, I felt like an instant action figure. I mean, people are like driving down Grant Road, almost rearranging each other to get a picture of me as I drive by, and, and it was a blast. Kids were flipping out. People would stop in the middle of Grant Road, jump out, run up to me to just give me a hug, and then get back in the car and leave. Like, what the hell happened? Did I get molested? <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> But that was it, so I was sold. So long story short, we ended up sl slowly building up some numbers. We got squad status, which is you have to have 10 members or more. Right now, even though you don't see them all at once, um, that'll be a miracle. Uh, we are sitting at like like 45 squad members in below peaks. So I know Seth is like, that's a bunch of bullshit. I never see those guys. So <laughs> we just never see them all together. But the great thing about it is, is it's accessible, and now, just like just like you, I mean, so many of what you said just mirrors, you know, when my daughter is now Black Academy, um, she's got a TIE pilot, um, my son is Black Academy, in a shore trooper that he's going to be wearing later today, so if you see a shore trooper, do you guys know who that is? It's the tan, newer troopers from Rogue One, uh, but it's made out of foam. Because when they're under 18, you get away with a little bit more. It's made out of foam, but you wouldn't really tell unless you went up and, and actually like uh, looked at the fine details or, or picked it up. And I got to take a trooping with me. We've done the zoo, we've done charity walks, and they just love it. And it's a lot of fun, I think, right? <laughs> so it's now, it's now, uh, not now, it is, again, uh, a way of life. So. You know, and it's easy, and, and I love it for the exact same reason you said too. Is um, I I went to Celebration Five, which is the fifth one ever. It was the uh, anniversary of Empire Strikes Back. I didn't know anybody, all right. But I walk into the hotel, and there's some some there's a, a lady with a Rebel Legion lanyard pinned. You can tell, you know, when we're in off duty, you can always still tell who we are because we bling ourselves out. Like he's wearing one of our shirts, um, and instantly something in common. I'm. I'm in a bar with the Australian garrison. They don't know how to use our money. I'm teaching them how to use our money, and we're instantly talking about Star Wars. You know, the Belgian garrison built all the amazing, huge props you might see on the uh, the banner there, life-size high fighters and stuff like that. Wood, but wood must be free there, or something, you know, because all that stuff they bring to celebration, and it's amazing. Um, I can barely speak their language, but we're all just sitting there talking to each other, comparing. Costume parts, we get something instant come. So it's a it's a community, and that's what really draws it to me. And we can use it for charity purposes. Um, we've done hospital visits where we don't we know that we're not going to see the child again. You know, we know that they're not going to make it. But we've had nurses come out. I've got crying um, because. Uh, they say that uh, this little a little girl has smiled, you know. Uh, I get choked up because there's one little girl that uh, Seth might remember um, that she hadn't, uh, she, she we were told right off the bat that she wasn't going to make it. And, uh, we went there with a whole tray of pop figures. Remember the, the big old box? Yeah, I was not that one. I, I heard about yeah, that. Uh, of, of 
build you know, pop figures, you know, Star Wars guys that Fantasy Comics gave us. And uh, she, I, I wanted to give her, I gave her one, but she liked so many, I gave her the whole freaking box, <laughs> you know, and her, uh, her family later on sent us a message and said that, uh, you know, because of our visit, she didn't, she helped plan her own wake, knowing it was coming, and she made it a part instead of something sad, uh, because of our visit. So, uh, and we had to do good stuff too. We, I've been there twice now when a kid got to go home from getting cancer treatments. Like they were cleared. And they only have like a small group of people there. Like they, they don't let the world in. It's very private. And they invite us. But you're like, what am I doing there? <laughs> and then, is it Cardin's where they get to bang the gong? Or is it Phoenix Children's? Mm-hmm. One of them where they get to bang a gong and sign the wall before they leave after they've I think gone through. Cardin's. And it's like, it's just crazy standing there with a family who you've never met. But because you're Star Wars, they wanted you there for that, and the kids take pictures, and it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, uh, and I'll never, uh, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll do this for as long as possible. You know, it's, uh, it's a blast. So, you know, and then for every for every piece of charity that we do, we just have stupid fun. You know, just coming out here to a con, you know, pretending to blast each other, really blasting each other with Nerf guns for charity, <laughs> you know, whatever. It's a, it's a good time. It doesn't yeah. get playing with Batman because we get a cross piece. I know, right? I mean, where else can you go, like, here at this time, you know, jump into the satellite pit, wrap big big chemical around you, you know, and it's okay. <laughs> it's not weird. <laughs> we also do a lot of, I mean, the, the hospital visits and the walks are one thing. We also do a lot of other things that are fun, too. We, well, that's fun as well, but and the, on the lighter note, because... We are Lucasfilm approved. You may be a sick tough, you know, I look at the costumes, they're really, really picky. Basically, if Lucasfilm needs Star Wars characters for a promotional event, we're the people they call. So we'll go out, like we've done a weird hour, whatever he, when he called, we'd be the guy on the stage who called the Bible first, so we'd go for, we've been playing on stage with Weird Al, which is pretty ridiculously crazy. <laughs> When there's the movie premieres, you go and there's all the Star Wars characters running around. That's us. The Prince in Disney. The Prince in Disney. Yeah. Well, how many uh, how many troopers years and years ago did the Rose Parade? It was a massive. That was in two thousand and nine, ten. Yeah. Was it two hundred or one hundred? There were, he chose two troopers from every garrison, right? And he flew them in from all over the world, paid for it for himself. Have you um, seen like commercials, like? Yeah. Force Awakens, TFA, Rogue One, Nissan commercials, all those Duracell commercials. 80% of those guys running around are our troopers getting paid by Disney to be there. Yeah. Now, it's pretty cool. And related, really cool side note, it, everyone here have Rogue One on Blu-ray? If you watch the behind the scenes, our costume reference library is up on their computer as they're designing Stormtroopers. They're literally looking at our references <coughs> to figure out, because our crazy Uber nerds have spent so many years studying, you know, screenshots that sometimes Lucasfilm even takes a look at us to see, like, how does that, what's going on behind the scenes here? And it's, it's really a little stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Some of them could be murdered homicide detectives. Yeah. You know, <laughs> they were like, you know, this English guy in 1975 put that divot on that forearm in that piece of armor, you know, and they, they figure. For instance, like my sequence here that keeps flashing, if you've noticed it, there's a guy on the Denon helmet who took the HD version of Empire Strikes Back and just hit play and pause repeatedly and then recorded how many seconds it was in between each individual change, including like when you can't, when he turns around, he calculates that time to see how much time has changed in between each different iteration. So he spent like I don't even know how many times just pausing in each D thing, and they do that for like every costume. It's that ridiculous with the details. So that's why I'm happy just having somebody else do it, and then I'll buy it. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to do that. That sounds awful. Yeah, (laughs) that's not horrible. Unless you're him, I'm gonna need it. He sits there and play. Play a lot. I used to. Yeah, you used to. How many references of Cad Bane have you? 
a lot. It's a cat thing. Every <laughs> <laughs> if you have a CD, this this is a good hobby for you. Yes. So, so, that's, no, I I made the very foolish decision to make Kylo Ren before the movie came out, so I could experience that premiere new character thing, which was awesome, by the way. And so I made the costume based mostly off of uh, leaked images. And the very first time I wore it was when they released all the toys, and we went to a Walmart, and it was badly advertised and everything else. But at the end of the, you know, they would put all the toys out at midnight. I'm a school teacher, I get up at 6 o'clock in the morning anyway, so I got three hours of sleep. So I, the toys came up, I buy all the Kylo Ren toys. I'm sitting at home, oh man, I did it wrong, 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 <laughs> wrong. And it's totally ruined the costumes, I did it all wrong because there was no reference pictures. And so, you know, that's why, you know, nowadays if there's a costume from a new movie I want to make, I will, I will wait. <laughs> until they know what it's supposed to be. Like, for example, the fabric that Kylo Ren is made out of, that's everything from the new movies is just custom-made special fabrics now. So anything from, you know, Force Awakens on is going to cost you a ton more money. And there was a guy in Britain that actually made, custom-wove that fabric. It was $70 a yard, and he needed 10 yards to make the costume. And you had to wait seven months to get it. And I figured out how to make the costume with six shots. <laughs> now, if you go to Joanne's, you can buy the fabric for fifteen dollars a yard from uh, Yah Yah's cosplay yeah. line as <laughs> Dark Knight. <laughs> so, so you know, patience. Like I would not recommend doing a costume from the brand new movies unless you have a lot of money or you just have to make it, so. Another uh, interesting thing on that is sometimes whenever a new movie comes out, because like I remember looking, uh, as soon as I watched Force Awakens, I went home and I'm like, I'm gonna look at the CRL for Kylo Ren, and I did, and it was wrong. It was like, no zippers on the arms, none yeah. at all. You can't have those. And I'm like, he did though. Like, he definitely has yeah. zippers. The uh, CRLs changed, like, when I, Finally, when the CRL dropped, there was like an under tunic, which is like a third layer of black fabric that I didn't have, and I watched the movie, like, it's not there. <laughs> and so then I have, I mean, I spent thousand extra dollars fixing my costume so I could have that stupid wool tunic underneath <laughs> everything else, right? And now that and I'm also the only kind of red phoenix that has all three layers, and I now when I when I walk, it sways differently. Okay, I'm, I'm cool with that, I'll be that guy. But now they realize that he actually wears five different costumes in the Force Awakens. He keeps changing it out. So it's become an optional accessory now. So you don't need to have that third wall to do I'm wearing it because it cost me a thousand dollars. So yeah, if you want so that, do your research. I know. People always love the classic trilogy. I mean, you could be a TFA trooper, but you're always going to be a stormtrooper, right? Mm -hmm. So people, because they know the classics, stick around. So yeah, it's, it's most important to do what you like. Yeah. That's the key. You know, make something you want, not because you feel like you should make something else, or yeah. it doesn't matter. Just make what you want, and then you have a lot of fun. Ask a lot of questions. Yeah, not, and I know you make it seem like it's a little complicated and things change, but the reason why they are so strict is we are representing Lucasfilm when we're out there. So our costumes are screen accurate for the most part. You know, we don't want someone to come out there and do some thing and, you know, at a Star Wars night at the Diamondback scene or something like that. Like, well, who got that guy out there? You know, so we are representing Lucasfilm when we're doing charity. And promo stuff. And there is lots and lots and lots of help. I mean, with, uh, I'm sure everyone who's got other flyers, there's all the different stuff we have. Time? Yeah. Five more minutes. Two minutes. Okay, so who wants some pictures of these fabulous costume people? <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's what you're here for, right? So let's get you guys kit it up. Get some more awesome pictures. Yeah, I'm just chopping liver. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if Vader shows up, then I'm chopped over. Exactly. <laughs> 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 <laughs
Listen, they can. Yeah. If you have any questions, you don't want to ask in front of everybody, come find us and I'll ask some yeah. questions. Oh, Chris. Yeah. That's too much. We have a couple of Jedi's too. Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. And feel free to enjoy our other shows, such as D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition and Scion Ragnarok and Roll, a Scion hero to Ragnarok story. Thank you for listening.